evening. So today we're going to be reading some of Shakespeare's sonnets. This is my complete works of Shakespeare. Yeah, I know. But I do love it. And we're going to start with my very, very favorite sonnet uh, that he wrote. And it's one of my favorite love poems, too. And I think it's one of the ones that encapsulates love the best of anything I've ever seen. So we're going to we're going to read the 29th sonnet. Like I said, it's my favorite one. So I really hope that you like it. <laughs> when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone will eat my outcast state and trouble death heaven with my fruitless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing myself, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, contented least. Then in these thoughts, myself almost despising, Haply I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth to sing hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with king. This poem encapsulates love really well. I mean, that specific kind of love that's between two people. Not not the general like love of mankind or or love of someone who can't you know love you back or, but a specific love between two people could be romance. It could be friendship. Could be, you know, family. But it's a bond that's so strong that you wouldn't trade it for anything when everything in your life is terrible. Except for this person. You still wouldn't trade places with anyone else in the world because the loss of that person's love, that person, would be greater to you than anything you might gain. That is love. That, that is the greatest love. And I think that's something you don't find very often. But it's very precious. That's my take on it anyway. I love that sonnet because of the way that it views love. He wrote a lot of sonnets about love about admiring a person's beauty, about enjoying their company, about wanting to spend forever with them, about how they represent everything. But this sonnet specifically is the one that's most about love to me because it's about something deeper than attraction or infatuation. It's about a bond so strong that it can get you through anything, that it's more precious anything else. And that's something special. Let me see. Let me see.
to let me see. This is a good one. It is the 18th sonnet. This one's very famous. You've probably heard it before. But it's, it's still pretty good. There are a lot of speculations about this. But I like to take it at face value. I don't know who he wrote it for. But I know what he said. So I'm going to read this one. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves, and summer's leaves hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often it is his gold complexion gay, and every fair from fair some kind declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death Brag thou wanderest in his shade, in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to me. The most famous lines of this poem are the, the first lines, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So the most famous lines of this poem are the first lines, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. These, these are the lines that everybody remembers. Everybody says, I'm drinking, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Um, but to me, the best lines of this poem are the last lines. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. What he's saying here is that this poem will grant this person immortality. Now, I don't know if this was a lover or a friend, family member. No one can know for sure. Everybody makes guesses, but I don't think it really matters. Because what he's saying here, he says, everybody dies and everybody fades, but not you. I wrote this poem about you. And as long as this poem exists and people are still reading, you will live forever. That's kind of a writer's way of, of a, the poet's way of showing love, right? You write poems about the people you love and in some small way, they never die. They never die. Because you loved them and so you captured them forever paper and ink so long as men can breathe or eyes can see so long lives this and this gives life to thee the love of a poet yeah i'm just gonna do one more okay I'm sorry.
Oh, I like this one. I'm not sure what number this one is. This is where my Roman numerals begin to fail me, but I do believe. This is 116, so I'm at 116. And that's my Roman numerals fail me. This is the last one we're gonna read. I like this one a lot. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when the alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose words so known, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, the rosy lips and cheeks within his bending some sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me prove, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. This is a really interesting one, and I'm not sure I agree with him, but it's an interesting perspective, possibly hypocritical given his history, but he's saying love doesn't change. Love is not love, which alters when an alteration finds. No matter how the person that you love changes, your love for them doesn't change, is what that means. He's saying love doesn't change with the time passing and the days that go on or with how they change physically or mentally or, or anything. Love remains, no matter what matter what. I respect the perspective. I'm not sure I agree with it, but I respect it. But what's interesting to me is that he feels so strongly about this, so strongly, that he says, if this be error and upon me proved, I never read nor any man loved, nor no man ever loved. He's saying, if this is wrong, I've never written anything and nobody's ever loved anybody. He's so sure it's right that he's saying, if I'm wrong about this, then nobody's ever loved anybody and I've never written anything. It's basically like saying, like if you said, it's a, it, it is such and such a way of, or my name's not, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting. I never writ nor no man ever loved. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is he right? That love never changes. That no matter how the person you love changes, love itself never changes. Let me know what you think. Is that how love works? I don't know. Anyway, thank you for joining me today with for these three sonnets. I really enjoy reading them with you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. I'll see you soon.